on board with Harry. It's a bit wide there, chap. These these GT cars now they take some abuse, don't they? These these guys mm -hmm. are using every single sausage available to them, and they're just so strong now. Yeah, it's Tinknell, I think just popped yep. into the pits there and Magnus and that released Magnus and who was only three tenths of a second behind him and so we've got Collado in the pits in who was leading and overtaking Christensen and there's Collado and uh, Tinknell following him in the Ford so as the radio predicted he's going to have to pit a couple laps before Christensen does here comes Tinknell in the Ford hits his marks in the number 67 Bit of a check of the brakes. Yep. There's like groove indicators yes. on the disc itself. Just having a little look to see. They've also got wear indicators on the pads anyway and uh, the disc, so they know where the brakes are from the data, but it's always good just to have a visual check have to make vision. sure the sensor is correct. Much like saving tires for the end of the race, you want to, these GTE Pro cars will be making a brake disc and pad change at some point in the nighttime and they want to leave that as late as they yep. possibly can as well so that they've got more brakes for the end of the race. Yeah, or alternatively do it under a safety car or something where you're going to lose a very limited amount of time. Well, they've got it down now that they can do it in under 35 seconds, which is the time for the fueling. So 35 seconds. Yes, the Corvette can do the fronts in 17 seconds and 30 seconds on the backs. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go to your local car dealer when they're <laughs> and complain to say that the Corvette racing team can do it in 17 <laughs> seconds. So why are you charging me one hour? It is, uh, yeah, it's a it's a two it's a, a a two bolt system. Quick release. Quick release. Out comes the entire assembly. On goes a whole brand new assembly with new pads and discs. Two bolts in, and you're done. More, ph more ph phenomenal was was uh, back in Alan's old R8. Is that, I oh, that, that transmission thing? Oh they my they God. just had this system in the roof and this engine and gear, uh, gearbox <laughs> whole back end. Basically, their gearbox was not very reliable, so they designed <laughs> they designed a oh we'll just put it on a whole new back end. Uh -huh. And four minutes later, we were all like, oh my what? God, it's it's going again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you that. We didn't actually have many gearboxes that required changing. No, it was you didn't. all of the ancillaries around it. Wheel bearing, for example, in 2000, we had a wheel bearing failure in our car, and that meant uh, that it was quicker to change the whole rear end as opposed to changing the upright. And uh, so it was actually very Everything beneficial else. for so many other things yeah. because you had completely new wheel bearings, you had new gearbox, you had new everything when you changed it. And so it wasn't changing one one old part for a new part and everything else was still old. Yeah. You changed everything for new. Yeah. Was the, was the Caution's gearbox... out, let's freshen up the back of the yeah. car. Yeah, was the, was the <laughs> gearbox preheated for that? Before uh, it no, got bolted no, on? No, 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 no. Impressive. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, when that car leaves the pit lane for 35 seconds later, it's going... 200 miles an hour, so yeah. it's, uh, it's as quite, is the driver. Yeah, yeah, as is the driver. <laughs> so it's quite quite an impressive thing to change the half a car, and uh, off you go. Talking of uh, changing, and off you go. I'm going to now head off for a little bit of a rest and recuperation, and hand over to my coequipier, my teammate, the one and only Peter Dumbrick. Nine yeah. hours complete. Less than 15 hours to go now. 14 hours, 56 minutes remaining. Thank you, Alan. Have a good rest. I'm Jim Roller, along with the aforementioned Peter Dumbreck and, of course, Jamie Campbell Walter. Good evening. What's yeah. happened then? What's happened while I was lying well, I down in my caravan? I heard your rumor that you just had your second supper. Um, what are you, a hobbit? <laughs> second <laughs> breakfast, second supper? <laughs> And a lie down in my caravan. Uh, that does equal <laughs> Hobbit, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh, we've got one off. Aston. Yep. It's 97. Oh. Alex That's Lynn. Alexander Lynn behind rear, the wheel of that car. Rear wing damage, I can see. And a lot of smoke. And a lot of smoke. Where is he? Oh, is there something uh, else Porsche. there? Oh. Yes, there's something else there. He's got on the grass. He's dropped the wheel, hasn't he? He's dropped the wheel onto the grass as he's turned into karting. 
But it almost looked like he was trying to avoid whoever was in front of him. Might have, might have chopped him a little bit. Not necessarily on purpose, but. Yeah, we saw Olivia Pla do that. Uh, when was that in qualifying? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. He dropped the wheel, same thing, and put the car on the wall. You, it's difficult. If you do that, it's very difficult to avoid the wall. He's so close to you at that part of the track. So he's, he's stuck. He can't get it. You can see the car moving there. See, the wheels are spinning, I think. He's trying to get himself out, but uh, the car's beached. Yeah. Yeah, and I can see a bit of damage to the tire wall here, I yeah. think. So I think he's gone rear end yeah. in first. Rear wing off. Is, the rear wing is askew. Could be a safety car, this, you know. Yeah, or it's certainly gonna... at least a slow zone, if yeah. not a safety car. Or a, a full course yellow. I wouldn't be against a, sa a safety car. Yeah. Here we go again. I don't think so. I think that. I think he's just got. Just hung a wheel. Yep. Yeah. Down in 14th place in pro, Alex uh, with the sister car of Marco Sorensen in P13. Contentious issue, I know, BOP, but mm -hmm. uh, Aston Martin were on pole position, and uh, this morning, uh, or yesterday, I think, um, the FIA and ACO decided to give a uh, five kilo penalty, yeah. uh, uh, sorry, increase in weight, uh, smaller fuel flow restrictor, I think. And um, I think less turbo boost. Yes, um, got, him. got so him for the cycle. Quite a few changes. You difficult, know. difficult for us to sit here because we don't have the information no. um, that the FIA have. So difficult for us to judge, but it does seem overly harsh. And to back that up, they also seem to be having trouble on their second stint. Uh, with a tire, yeah, uh, and of course there's a limited amount of tires they can use. So, well, um, you wouldn't think five kilos would make that much difference, but it does. Well, it, it does. It, it does. Over the course of a stint, exactly. an ex, you know, any extra weight you're carrying does have an adverse effect on tires. There's that quick change system that we were talking about earlier. It looks like uh, if Alex can get that car back to the pits, it looks like they're going to take this opportunity to do a brake change now. It looks like they'll be doing a rear end change, a wing yeah, change be as doing well. Yeah, they're going to be doing a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, it's a contentious issue, but, you know, and who are we to judge? We don't have all the information, but what we do know is that the lead Aston Martin in 13th place in pro is two laps behind the lead Porsche. Yeah. And after nine hours, yeah, I think they've obviously lost a little bit too much because yeah. we can't sit here and say the drivers are no good or the right, team's yeah, no good. Right, yeah, they didn't just suddenly forget um, how to drive. You know, the pole position car is is miles off, let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I it, think it's a big shame because they, they very quickly, you, you, a BOP thing can just make a small difference, you know. Yeah. And what you think that the organizers probably thought, you know, that'll just bring them back a little bit uh, and, you know, it'll reset everything nice. But sometimes it's difficult to tell what that restrictor change or uh, weight change or the effect that it has on so many things. And, yeah. Um, and it's yeah. not like they were, you know, Ford a couple of years back. No. Oh, yeah. They, they, they probably should have had a proper BOP and they didn't get it. Yeah, um, they were making a movie. Whereas, then, so, uh, yeah, whereas Aston Martin, on the other hand, were only barely on pole position. One tenth. One tenth. Yeah. One tenth. I mean. And the other car was further back. So it's not like they were running away with it. However, in fairness to the, to the, to the officials, this isn't, these decisions are not made willy nilly. The amount of data yes. that they collect is mind boggling. Well, I know that uh, I was speaking to John Gore, who is the uh, boss of Aston Martin mm -hmm. Racing and Pro Drive, uh, and they, the organisers asked Dan Sayers, the uh, chief engineer of AMR, to explain. They overlaid basically uh, the test day lap, the fastest lap from the test day, and then the qualifying lap. And they said, "Can you explain that to us, please?" Ah. And, you know, they have this sort of rule that if you, we call it sandbagging. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> uh, they have this rule if they think that you are sandbagging on purpose yep. uh, to gain from the BOP, that's another reason yeah, why they, they could penalize you. So, yep. Which, it's, but it's difficult to know what, what, what the real truth is. So he's got uh, a rear wing fallen off. I think the car looks generally okay, though. 
Yeah, you got away lightly out of that one. Yeah. Uh, they would now, probably want to clear that the gravel out, uh, you know, on the under tray as well. Work here goes on, and that's the number 22 car. That's Paul DeResta in the pits. They've been struggling with that door. Got the tank tip out, I reckon. For, yeah, for, for a while. And this, this, <laughs> this is a bit of a contentious thing for this team as well, because this car had trouble in scrutineering because the the, the scrutineer wanted to be able to open the door with just one finger. Oh, well, so that, look, they've got the hammer on. Yeah. Now. That, so now okay. they're just they're just uh, bash it a bit. There you go. Get a bigger hammer. <laughs> Paul DeResta is uh, one of the drivers That's I look after. That's gotta be frustrating. Uh, he's uh, Ferdinand Habsburg in DTM with our motorsport. Paul DeResta is his uh, teammate, uh, a past champion of DTM, and uh, been been very good uh, help to young Ferdinand. As the uh, Aston Martin comes in, let's check in in the Ford pit with Louise. Harry Tinknell has bought in the 67 and uh, tyres, and obviously what everyone's talking about. We heard Team Radio that they were putting you on used tyres. How are they for you? Do you know what? They actually uh, went really well. Uh, you know, our biggest problem is raceability. We've got the car to win. Uh, it's quick enough. We're good enough on, in the corners. We're good enough at the end of the straights. It's just the initial acceleration. We're losing five, ten car lengths. It just means it's very, very difficult to overtake because they get that initial run off the corner and you don't really catch them back to the end of the straight and vice versa. If, if we get blocked by you know, an AM car or get bogged by a, um, an LMP1 or LMP2 car, then they just get the run and pass us. So we're having to just drive at 10 tenths to try and keep ahead. Uh, and, and, and passing is very difficult without taking a, you know, a 10 out of 10 risk. So, you know, the tires are good, everything's working. You know, the 67 car's right there. We just, we've got to make sure we're there in the morning. And I think if we are, we can maybe uh, do something clever with the strategy and uh, try and get ahead. But it's great, you know, the BOP looks very close. All the manufacturers are there. It's, uh, we're in the race, but we can't quite fight. It's quite frustrating, but uh, we'll keep trying. Well, that's what I was just about to say. It's fun for us to watch, but is it fun or frustrating for you? Like I say, I mean, it's great when you're right there, you know, nose to tail with a car, but realistically, without doing a, a massive risk, it's very, very difficult to overtake. I think in the first hour, I've gone round the outside of Indy twice and Molstan corner once, and it's not really conducive to finishing the 24-hour race. So uh, we're just trying to take our chances when they're maybe a little bit uh, less risky. But uh, look, we're still in the fly. We're right there, and uh, we've got the pace. So let's see. So the work now, the, the hard work for these mechanics begins as they try to assess what damage there is and then what they need to do to fix it. That right side of the bodywork certainly seemed, uh, it, was, it was a bigger hit than we thought. Mm. And the bonnet's not <laughs> flat down, is it? I don't need a bit of tank tape. Harry getting, getting a cuddle. Well done, <laughs> Smelly, <darling>. Harry, <laughs> smelly. <laughs> oh, you stink, darling. <laughs> you smell like a goat. Yeah. <laughs> And that's another area where they have to check the mounts, make sure it was, wasn't damaged at the mounts, that it was just maybe the mounts, the, uh, the uprights that were damaged. They've used this opportunity to put the new brakes on. 14 hours, 14 and 46 to go. Mm. Quite handy for them. They've got a slow zone, uh, which helps because it slows the cars down. Uh, give you an idea, the Toyotas are down into the four minutes, so they're losing around about 35 mm -hmm. seconds a lap from that. So obviously that's a that's a gain for uh, for the Aston team. One, one uh, Aston Martin we haven't seen much of or talked much about is the TS Sport one with uh, Ewan Hankey at the wheel. Um, currently running fifth in AM. Uh, being kind of quiet through the whole race, and suddenly they're they're you know gradually moving up the order, uh, doing a good job with that car. So it's it's nice to see one of the Astons at least uh, taking the fight to the the top of the AM class. Yeah, but and that's a bit of a comeback drive for them. They had some trouble early, yeah. and they've uh, they've been able to get it back into the hunt. While we're uh, talking about Aston Martin. So 
I don't know, Jim, if, if you're aware of uh, the Gumball Rally. Oh, yeah. So uh, Gumball Rally took place this week. They drove from Mykonos to Ibiza, and the only road legal uh, Vulcan, Aston Martin Vulcan, was in that, owned by uh, Gleb Stefanov um, from uh, Latvia. And so they completed 3,000 miles in that car with no problems at all, and they drove it from uh, Greece to Ibiza, and then he won the Best Car Award, the Hot Wheels Best Car Award. So a little shout out for them. Um, excellent work, great bunch of guys. I worked with the Vulcan guys, um, doing track days with them, coaching with them. So uh, it's good to see Aston doing some good things. Anyway, back to this race. Still the slow zones out. Is he hiding something? He's, he's filming something. Uh. Promotional stuff, you know. Yeah. But whilst he's on the Double promo dipping. Stuff, my son just sent me a text saying, can you give me a shout out? So I'll say, hi, Harry. There you go. <laughs> I should it's, hide a Betty earlier. It's we're, we're, right. You know, as darkness falls and we can't see quite so much and there's a yellow zone, we can talk about other things, yeah. you know. <laughs> All the wags. Wags. Waves. Waves of... I'm not sure what it stands for, actually. Wives, <laughs> wives and girlfriends. Oh, yeah, wives, oh, and, wives girlfriends. and girlfriends. On board with the seven. He's about to come into the slow zone now. Somewhere here. Yeah. So that's a, that's the wall that uh, Getting repaired. Aston Martin was in a short while ago. That corner there, the karting corner, is off camber. Again, it's hard to see it from here but uh, they're just repairing the wall now, but it it's really is quite off camber, so the cards do tend to slip out wide there, and you can see how close the tire wall is to the actual track, and so if you have a spin there, yeah, you're, you're going straight in the wall. There's been some big ones uh, through the years going in that wall. Let's uh, check in with Louise. You're looking on, you're keeping the radio on, finding out what's going on. Tell us the extent of the damage to the 97. We went on into the gravel at the last chicane, and uh, there's a lot of damage to the rear of the car. It's just uh, broken the rear spoiler. Uh, so we're going to uh, we do a brake change now anyway, and we try and get some time back there. So it's just some rear end damage. Uh, quite lucky, I think, but we're not lucky to lose the time, but we're lucky to get away with less damage. So hopefully couple more minutes and we'll be back out. It's just not going Aston Martin's way so far, is it? <laughs> no, but it's still, you know, I'm hoping there might be some rain in the morning. Uh, we, we just never give up. We'll just keep trying to the end and we'll see what comes out of it. Thank you. Keep pushing. That's all you can do. Just keep Keep it running. Find out where you are in the morning. Make your decisions. Yeah, still a long way there. to go in this oh, race. Yeah. Four, 14 hours and 40 minutes. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, as, as uh, Harry said a short while ago, Harry Tignall, um, they're, they're reasonably happy. They're not absolutely over the moon, but they're hoping that they can uh, switch up the strategy a little bit. Um, car, his car, the 67 Ford, is running in fourth place just now with um, Bomarito at the wheel. So anything can happen. We've seen this every year, really, where, um, you know, one by one, these cars have an issue and, mm. and one slips out and you're left with four and then three and then two. And at the moment, it does seem to be Christensen's to lose, but his gap is now down, so the 92 car is only five, six seconds ahead of the 51 um, Ferrari now, whereas he had a much bigger gap than that before, didn't he? So this uh, slow zone's worked out for Collado quite a lot. Well, and Collado, on his last set of new tires, was lightning fast. So it's really this uh, cooler weather is really going the Ferrari's way. You know, we've, we've seen them come up. I think, as I said before, that 51 car qualified back on, I think it was like the sixth row of the grid in, in uh, GT Pro. So they've come all the way up to second place now. But 
Porsche have a, a rich history at this track as well. The fight between Ferrari and Porsche is, is always on. And it was Porsche's last year, so let's see what happens now. And I'm so happy the Corvette are back up there fighting again as well because they didn't have a good time last year. So mm. it's nice to see Magnussen again. Must have been here many times now. 45-year-old driver, I believe. 20 times. This is his 21st. Yeah. This so is his actual 21st. A lot of experience. Right. Um, and, yeah, it would be great to see the Corvette fight and to have the, the other, the Ford up there, the 67. So the, the first four cars in GT Pro um, are four different manufacturers. Yeah. I mean, 20 seconds to clear the slow zone. The uh, Corvette was very punchy at the beginning of the race oh, yeah. in the daylight. So they seem to have slipped back a tiny bit, 10, 20, 9, 25 eight, seconds off. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Slow zone is clear, slow zone is clear. So that means the lap time should just start to come back down to what we saw. It was costing uh, about 35 seconds a lap. So we should start to see some of these lap times drop. And as usual, here we go. <laughs> back to a 71 Sam Bird, Patrick Pile in the number 93, the battle for fifth position, nose to tail, and I think behind them is Richard Leitz. No, nope, he's not, uh, it's just those two. I thought there was a third uh, third car in the battle. So oh, the 67 is ahead of them. Looking at the pit stops, uh, yeah, pretty that's, much that's all a change. Uh, Sam Bird has just done JB, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yep. But, but they, they've only done nine stops as well, and the cars in front have done ten. Yeah. Which means they've got an even greater advantage. Interesting to see still. Uh, Dunlop, Michelin, Dunlop, Michelin. First four cars in LMP2. Mm -hmm. The tyre battle continues. Seven second gap between... I uh, know, is it? No, it's a lap. Bomarito doing everything he can at this point. When did that gap? Oh, 95 oh. car. Oh. Is that the si it's not the same corner. Tell no. me that's not the same corner. No. Is it? Uh, that's a big impact, though. Yeah, that's a huge impact. Marco Sorensen. Oh, boy. Went in backwards. So we like. just got the double yellows removed. So he's uh, yeah, said it's, 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 it, it's in Indianapolis. It's drivers right in Indianapolis. So the Aston crew have got a lot of work to do now, Boy. halfway through rebuilding one car, and, uh, well, he's shaken. He's clearly shaken. Oh, yeah. And oh, limping. limping. Oh. Oh, oh, wow. Oof. That is a mighty fast accident. Lost yes, it rear. is. He lost the rear on oh, the way in. Boy. That's That's unusual to, for that to happen. Uh, was that cold tires? What was that? That's that's strange, isn't it? Because that corner is normally pretty much flat. Uh, the first part of it, anyway. Uh, it just seemed that the rear end came round on him, and normally there, you'd expect understeer rather than oversteer. Safety car. Yeah. Big hit. It's a fast corner. Yeah. It's a sixth gear uh, corner. Yeah. It's, six gear it's corner. pretty much the fastest point of the circuit. Yeah. So. Well, you don't want to go off, basically. But it's nice to see that uh, Mark was out of the car, although limping, but he's out. That's got that right-hander before the bank left-hander. Yeah. Where, where's your breaking point there? Is it after the right? Is it after that kink? It, you do break, actually, yeah. uh, but it's it's very, very light. Yeah. You don't lose a lot of speed. Almost the confidence lift more than a... Yeah. Yeah. Um, it depends on your car setup. Well, the, the, oh, he he the heavy braking, the, the heavy braking is round wow. the corner afterwards. Yeah. So he's, he's he's lost it for the right. Yeah, he's lost it in the right hander. Yeah, wow. You don't see that very often. No, that is an unusual place to go off. 
If anything, the you know the cars tend to uh, not take enough speed off for the left hander mm -hmm. and therefore run yeah. wide into yeah. the gravel. But you very rarely see a car. But again, that that whole area has been extended for exactly this reason. Very reason. That's right. Do I have a feeling that seven and eight have been split by the safety car? Sideways, it's a and driver's so, yeah, uh, driver's he's, he's side. Yeah. To turn yeah, he, in he lost the rear very yeah. early. Could be a failure, something break. Yeah, you know, we, we were talking about BOP earlier and how Aston were maybe dealt a raw deal, but the, the thing is, is that the drivers, when, when they know they're on the back foot and they've seen them go from the front sort of slowly backwards, um, do they push? much much harder because they have to right, sure trying to make up trying to make up for that and yeah it's certainly a factor word from the pits is that we might have one of the rebellions going into the box louise yeah i've just seen the rebellion going on the dollies and being pushed into the box i'm making my way up there to see what they're working on that's the number one car with bruno senna behind the wheel has been pushed back into the garage area the, the medical crew has arrived to tend to Marco Sorensen. Apologies, I think I called him Michael earlier. It's Marco Sorensen. Of course, world champion a couple of years ago yeah. with Nicky Team in the old car, as was Jamie here sitting next to me. Yep, 2013. Well, they're nearly there with the 97 car. So who's going to benefit from this uh, safety car? Who was about to pit? And the pit entry is open. So there could possibly be some cars gaining a little bit of an advantage from this. Yeah, uh, Jackie Chan have only done 14 stops, as have Dragon Speed. Yeah, so Jackie Chan could be a winner from this because they can make their stop now. I don't think that uh, Aston Martin's going back out again. No. no. So we're going to get another withdrawal. The good news is it hasn't split up the GT Pro battle. Petrov in the SMP car into the box, so as is yeah. uh, Bruno Senna in the Rebellion. You can see them waiting at the, or one of the cars waiting is probably Senna waiting at the exit, or it could have been the Labra as well, but um, yeah, he'll let this uh, bunch of cars by and then he'll be able to join on the tail of it. Yeah, the pit, uh, pit exit is closed. Uh, whilst a safety car and the train is going past the pit exit. Uh, if there is no safety car or cars on the pit straight, then uh, the pit, pit exit is open. Well, they've got plenty of spares now. Really sad to see when you see two cars go out. Back uh, to back like that. Back to back. All within a, a half a an couple, hour. Yeah, yeah, a few laps apart. Um, both with accidents. As you yeah. say, you know, when, when you are on the back foot and you're having to push that bit harder, um, you're taking more risks and, you know, you, you still believe, you still think, you know, we can do something with this. Um, we just need a bit of luck, but uh, in this instance, he got no luck. And, uh, yeah, it looks like the end of car 95. Driver's side impact as well. Never a good thing.
on board from the rebellion behind Alex Lynn. Another view of his off. Thankfully, not as big as Marco Sorensen, so um, a bit of a somber Aston Martin pit right now. Yep, we can see that, Louise. Uh, they're, they're the driver's in. They've put the new tyres and brakes on. Uh, the rear wing is on, now on the car, and they look to be putting a new front nose on it. Yeah, they're making every effort to try and get this car back into the race. Looks like the number one rebellion may also be coming back out onto the track shortly. This is that. So we can now we get a good chance to see what's happened in the GT Pro battle. So we have the front, the first two cars, Christensen and uh, James Collado, nose to tail, but Magnussen and Bomarito, Pile, Leach, all seem to be behind the next safety car. So yeah. they've lost two minutes 40. So um, at the moment, they've been very... Uh, that happened minutes. once before, and then the next safety car balanced them all out and they were all back together, so. Any chance to repeat this lap or don't? Yeah, normally, normally we would uh, need to repeat uh, this lap and I'm thinking uh, how much we will. Is this going to be a long safety car, you reckon? Apparently it's, uh, it's going to stay out, so uh, we should be able to do one more lap. Let's check in with Louise on what's going on with the Rebellion number one. Andre Lotterer, the Rebellion number one has just been pushed back out, but can you tell me what the problem was? Uh, yeah, we changed the rear dampers because um, in the middle of the first stint, uh, at the start of the race, um, Bruno realized there was something with the car, and when I drove, uh, it was very difficult to, to keep the, the, the car um, drivable so we were really not happy so we we um, we used the safety car situation to to change dampers without losing too much time uh, you've been here many times before at Le Mans how do you sum up this one for you so far well uh, yeah luckily I've had better days here so uh, let's see you know it's still 14 hours to go but uh, didn't didn't start very well we we had a puncture and then we had a wheel nut issue so then this, so yeah, not, not the best start. So we keep going and let's see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. How hard is it, guys, to stay motivated? Thank you, Luis. Uh, when, uh, when, when, you know, when the first 12 hours of this thing has been just a struggle. Well, your motivation comes from how much time you lose. If, if um, like the, you know, before when the, uh, the Pedro Lamy, Aston Martin was in the pits for so long and, and then they had problem after problem. Uh, your motivation gradually goes down until the car stops out on the track and then you're at rock bottom and you're yeah. like, okay, it's time to call a day on this. But if, you know, from Rebellion's point of view, they're still in sixth place. Um, they're, they're still running. So, and they're, they're ahead of um, all of the MP, LMP2 cars. So, you know, there's still something to fight for. OK, they're six laps down on the Toyota, but we, we've seen we've seen even on the last lap of this race in the past when Toyota oh, yeah. stopped, you know, anything can happen. So it's definitely worth keeping on going, just knocking in the lap times. And if fortune favours you, then it goes your way. And, and maybe Rebellion are, you know, at best could maybe think of a a podium, but you just never know. Yeah, uh, Bruno in the car at the moment, absolutely, as Peter says, it just takes, you know, suddenly uh, something happens in an hour's time, SMP have a oh, yeah. car failure, uh, the other SMP has a contact with a back marker. And, and all of a sudden you're looking at a he's podium. He's only four laps behind those cars, so, yeah. and it takes them four laps to repair it. All you of know, a sudden, you look, and, yeah. and all of a sudden, you're suddenly, hey, hang on, we've got a chance of a podium. So yeah. they, they've absolutely got to keep pushing. I mean, they're very much the underdogs in this race. Obviously, Toyota um, are are the favourites for a one-two. But uh, you know, you you have to keep fighting. And, and last year, it was well on for mm. you know anything to happen as well. So. Um, yeah, it's it's. Let's see when when uh, the sun comes up in the morning. That that's a better indication of uh, where where we lie. 
when I was teammates with Andy Wallace here uh, in 05, I remember he said to me, uh, I was getting all excited as I do, and uh, he said to me, Jamie, the race really doesn't start until you know the sun comes up. And he said, bear in mind, when the sun comes up, we've still got nine Grand that's Prix right. to go. Oh, that's exactly Nine right. Formula One Grand Prix to go. So, and it's sort of like, you're sort of like, yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like free practice at the moment. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But that's the thing. You have to make it to sun up. Yeah, you got to make and, it. And again, as as you gotta make it was saying, you got to make it to sun up. Then you got to make it to noon, and then step and then you're by step. I feel a song coming on. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Really. <laughs> you want me to sing? Uh, probably no, not. Jimmy. No, thank oh, okay. you. Thank you. Well, I'll say goodnight. Duncan. Night. We can get Duncan in here. He's he's a good singer. <laughs> I'll see you later. So Jamie Campbell Walter will take his leave of us. Have a nice little nap, mate. I'll see you in the morning. Pit stops continue. That's another thing that under the safety car, if you you kind of gotta anytime you pit, that's the 97 coming back out, so. Wow, great work by that crew. How long was he in? 25 minutes. Right. So now we have to that's see. A, that's whether, a pretty good. Yeah. It's, they're not in the woods yet, though. They, you know, they've got to, got to get that car back up to speed yeah. and make sure nothing else is wrong with it because that was a, a fairly big hit. Safety cars will be coming in this lap. As we're closing in on 12.40, Central European summertime. Johnny's hours. wife Rachel there watching yep. on. Johnny, of course, in the 97 car with Alex Lynn. So safety cars will be pulling off. One of them will pull off after the first chicane. The other one will pull off at the exit of Arnage and the third safety car will pull off just before the Ford chicane. Thank you. Martin Haven coming in with some caffeine sustenance for us. A little Sainsbury's red with a little milk. You going to join the party? Welcome. Did you uh, have a little rest? Yeah, just had a little uh, power nap for an hour. Mm -hmm. And turn your back on Aston Martin, and suddenly uh, all the wheels have fallen off their wagon. But we still have a stunning battle in GTE Pro. Unfortunately, now it's just down to two cars because of the safety car. But as I told Peter earlier, the first safety car took away, and the second one gave it back to us. So. Wow, big dive by uh, Collado there, past Chris. No, sorry, I got that wrong. That's the 92 car. Yeah, this is Michael the leader, Christensen. Michael Christensen. We're on board with me. He, well, he yeah. had a, a late dive by one of the other cars, and I, I can't remember which one, one and, that was. And now he's in a long queue of traffic, and you saw the bike holler is trying to come by as well. Yeah. He had the door shut on him. Christensen's got by the two AM class cars as well, the yeah. TF Sport. Aston Martin and the Spirit of Race for there Ari. Comes the There's the bike car. Car. <laughs> Fires down the inside. And that car a long way back. That car is currently 57th with Tom Dillman at the wheel. There's the queue of cars. WeatherTech Ferrari, the AM class car, the 62. Behind them is the 63. That's your female crewed car. Uh, behind them on the road, but actually ahead of them in the results. I know it's not, in fact, the uh, Kessel Racing Ferrari is behind them on the road as well. On board with 92. He's making short work of this, and that's where the yeah. skid marks of the Aston Martin, that's where that car went off. Of course, it took a little while to get the driver's door open on the car yeah. because it was hard up against the barriers. It's a left-hand drive car. There's a TF Sport Aston, one of the 
they of course are Ferraris behind that'll be the 51 car of James Collado so not too far behind Michael Christensen just a second behind the Ferrari as we ride uh, behind the Porsche as we ride on board with the Porsche into the Porsche curves It's not going to be Aston Martin's weekend, is it? 98 car, the door is down on it, although it's not an official retirement yet on our timing screens. That's the... Well, they have one last chance, don't they? Yeah. And that is the Ewan Hankey TF Sport in fifth place in Am. Yeah, but that's not an AMR car. All th you know, the AMR cars are all being hard, yeah. uh, hard to deal with. Sebastian Buemi into the pits in the second place Toyota number eight. And this is a routine stop. I was wondering how close we get on the safety car to these cars needing a stop. Um, but in fact, eight as ever, stopping a lap before seven and the safety car, we went green one lap before they were due into the pits. Only a couple of the LMP3 cars were out on, and in fact, one of the SMP cars were due a stop at that stage. So everybody else was far too early in the stint, two, three, four laps in. It's just, you're just giving away track position. And even though it's behind a safety car, Jim, you know, it's particularly you born and bred with American racing, you never give up track position unless no. you really have to, or there's a, a, you know, a guaranteed advantage. And the other risk too, is if you do pit and then you get held at the end of the pit lane waiting for the next safety car, yeah. you're just compounding, compounding your loss. Exactly right. You can lose much more than you could gain. We saw under one of our full course yellows, a couple of the LMP2 cars forced to pit because they were, uh, the, the fuel light was insisting that they did mm. and ignoring it here is not an option so they had a five second worth of fuel which gives you a lap basically here gets you round again and by that stage actually we had gone green so they were okay they could come in and fill up here's our third place battle in GTE Pro Jan Magnussen leads Patrick Pile. this is a, uh, a battle of uh, normally competitors who compete in America in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. 10 second penalty added to the uh, pit stop of the 97 car for uh, full course yellow procedures. That's just an insult to injury. Yeah. When it's not your night, it's, it's not just <laughs> not your night. Johnny Adam is back in the 97 car, back out on track, but it's is the 60 car of Kessel Racing still going? Yes, it is, but yeah. uh, and so is the by Collez, but basically uh, it's the last running car, all yeah. but. Through Ted Cruz they go. Pile trying to hassle Magnuson. The, cor the cor Corvettes were a little off the pace the first night, came on song on Thursday night and have been in the this 63 car has been in the top five the entire race so far it, it didn't have that kind of pace it didn't show that kind of pace in qualifying but when we talked to them on friday jim mm -hmm. all the corvette guys were very relaxed no we're okay we know what pace is in the car we just didn't get a lap in qualifying you think hang on a minute it's a 12 km it's an 8.8 .8 mile circuit what do you mean you didn't get a lap there's a record number of cars in qualifying. There's 61 yeah. cars in qualifying. And because of the way the weather went and safety cars and interruptions and so on, every time it was peak going out for a qualifying lap time, there were 60 other guys trying to do the yeah. same thing. So almost nobody got a lap. But they were very relaxed about their pace, which is so diametrically opposite to how they were last season when they didn't know the well, tire, the BOP wasn't working for them at all. They were just on a hiding to nothing. Riding on board in that battle. There you can see the Corvette guys and the Porsche guys watching it. Luis Beckett in the pit lane. We've had two or three safety cars rather than full course yellows. And, and full course yellows were supposed to pretty much dispense with safety cars. Some of the teams are a little bit confused why we're using the safety cars. Is that right? Yeah, it is, because obviously uh, it can make or break some people's races. And at, at the moment, the team I'm talking to is breaking theirs. Yeah, and that, that is a valid point. I mean, it's split up our GTE Pro field into 
a couple of penny packet parcels now. So we've got one small lead group, we've got another clump, and then we've got the third yeah. clump. And, and again, full course yellow, everybody's at mandatory 80 kilometers an hour. They're actually going a little faster in the queues behind the safety cars. And you think, well, is, is 80 kilometers an hour not safe enough? Well, Graham put forth earlier that he thought that, and this made a lot of sense at the time, that the reason for the safety cars was because the accidents were in an area where the corner workers would not be sighted. They couldn't see up the racetrack to see if anybody was coming, to see if people were adhering to the full course yellow 80 kilometers an hour. Well, the, the, the workers in Indianapolis were well back from oh, the tracks, exactly. so you exactly. would have thought there. Yeah. And, the, and the other thing is, what yeah. speed are the safety cars doing? They're not right. doing 80 kilometers an hour, they're going faster. Oh, yeah. So you've got a faster queue of traffic at, at, at greater intervals, yeah. but, the, but the workers still can't see them coming if they couldn't see yep. them coming at 80. The thing for everybody going at 80 what? kilometers an hour is maybe that there's no interval between the, the queues of cars. Perhaps uh, Louise can get, go and see uh, Eduardo Freitas yeah. and uh, yeah. ask him. Patrick Pile, Patrick Pile makes the move onto the front straightaway yeah. and takes over third position in the pro category. So it's now Ferrari, Porsche, Porsche and Corvette as Jean Magnussen gives up the position pretty much for the first time really on the racetrack. Uh, and not in the pits. Meanwhile, leader is on pit road. This is Mike Conway in the number seven car. He stays in, he takes fuel and waves away the drinks bottle. Obviously, it didn't have a cup of tea in it, did it? Nobody's waving one of those away at this time of night. He was purple in his... Well, no, that's the in lap again. Yep. That's the on in the lap. inlap, yeah. No, that, that always, that's the, a timing glitch. Yeah, uh, okay. We always see that, but... Never quite sure how that affects sector two as well. Yes, saying saying that, though, Conway is... I, again, I'm going to knock on wood as I say this, yeah. but he's, he's well, having a stunning, a stunning Le Mans yeah. 2019 so far. Let's, uh, let's hope he can keep that up. So he stays in the car. Mike Conway heads back out on track. Of course, that would have cycled the number eight car back into the lead. This is the beginning of his second stint. And Sebastian, no, the, oh no, hang a minute, no, it hasn't scrolled across to the right. Yeah, no, he's, he yeah. did one eleven lap, and that's a 12 lap run he's just completed. Hello, hello. But Boemi will because not. Because of safety car. Yeah. Exactly, yes. And Boemi will not cycle into the lead. He's not close enough. Uh, Conway yeah. has been able to stop and keep the lead every time. Yeah, so Boemi stopped last lap. That was yep. the end of a 12-lap run as well. That car, the number eight car, has done two 12-lap runs because of uh, interruptions. The number seven car has done three 12-lap runs. Interesting. Conway, last time he was in, did a did 22 laps consecutively, then another 11 lap run, which will have been, well, he did 10, 22, and then 11. So that will be the brakes in the tires. So he's double stinted tires up until now. Let's see if he's going to get a triple out of these. It's dark and cool. That temperatures will be going down. You can see it's, it's not a very clear night, so there is a decent blanket of cloud overhead. Fernando Alonso in his stint did four 11 lap runs. Nakajima then did a triple, no, Nakajima then did a quad. Nobody's, yeah, Lopez did a quad before handing over to Conway. And Kobayashi did a quad before that, so Toyota almost from the get-go. Conway did a triple at the start of the race. Now he, I'm sure, will be oh, yeah. doing Quatting a quad now. now. Actually, 10 laps at three and a half minutes a lap. It doesn't make it a very long stint, does it? It's, you know, <laughs> it used to be that the prototypes were going sort of 50 minutes, yeah. and they're back down at 35 minutes basically for a stint, barely 35 minutes for a stint. And that makes it hard work for the teams because the drivers can get out of the car. If your teammate is quadding, 
then you get half an hour, well, you get two hours between you need between getting out of the car and needing to be ready to get back in, in which time you've got to wind down a little, have a massage, take on some sustenance and some fluid, maybe get a, a little bit of sleep. But it means for the crew, the car is coming around for routine service at barely half hourly intervals. So there's no rest at all in the garage. Here's another look at that pass that Patrick Pile put on Jan Magnussen. I wonder if Magnussen got balked a little bit by that LMP2 car going through the Ford. Yeah, game. It's, it's quite possible. And, and, and oftentimes, Peter, the move happens on the run up through the Dunlop curve and it starts through the mm -hmm. quad corners of the chicane section, doesn't yeah. it? Well, that, that's the thing. In these slower corners, the prototypes with all the, their downforce, they're not much quicker, if any, than the actual GT cars. It's, yeah. it's in the faster corners that the prototypes are have the advantage. So I think you're right there. I think Magnussen just got caught up a little bit and uh, Pele took advantage. Now Jonathan Bomarito is trying to catch Magnussen. Gap now four tenths of a second. See the it's P2 come down from a second in the last three laps. P2 car there unusually going across the brow twice instead of staying on the right hand side. He clearly wasn't quite sure that he was going to get the next one and the next one because when you're behind one car in this light level you can't identify what the next set of lights in front of them is. So you've got to do it in little piecemeal packages. Well, the other thing is you're, it's hardwired into you to pick up the toe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever vehicle's in front, get in behind it. It's like being a bike rider. Always get oh, in yeah. behind the bike in front of you. And, of course, when you're not on the Borsan, it's not quite as critical about crossing over. But, actually, early on in the race, we saw Vitaly Petrov in the SMP car constantly crossing oh, yeah. over down the, the Borsan. And, and Alan the McNish road. was saying to me off air, he was saying, that is inexperience. An experienced prototype driver won't be doing that. He'll be staying on one side because every time you cross, the car is getting light, it's losing a little bit of grip, a little bit of balance. And so that, you know, all of that is unhelpful. Battle for fourth, Corvette having been pushed out of third, now has Jonathan Bomarito, Richard Westbrook's Fords catching up behind. And Richard Leitz is in the wagon train as well. And that group from Magnussen, who's 1.5 seconds behind Pile, there's another 1.5 seconds. In fact, there's another five, six seconds back to Joey Hand in eighth. So four, five, six, seven, eight, covered by about five and a half seconds. And of course, that group is a minute and 18 seconds behind the leading duo. Yeah. And that all happened because they got caught behind a different safety mm. car. Exactly the same thing happened last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, but it, then it was one Porsche yeah. that was away and clear. And in the end, they just kept going. And which Porsche was it? It was the 92 car. And which car in, of the Porsche team is in that little breakaway group of two? It's the 92 car again. It's likely going to strike twice. It was, uh, yeah, it yeah. was dressed as a pig last year, though, wasn't it? Was it was so. dressed as a pig last year. <laughs> a very pink one. Yeah, but uh, it was the lucky porker last year. You see what I did there? Oh, gosh, there's 14 hours of this to go, folks. Oh, you might, might want to get some rest as well. He's here all week. Try the veal. Yeah. What oh, a puff of dust off the inside of that corner back there. Some Someone must have been off the track and dragged some dust on it. Board with Jonathan Bomarito. This is the 67 car, uh, one of the two Chip Ganassi Team UK cars, the lead UK car, and in fact the lead Ford as well. Bomarito, fully three tenths of a second or two car lengths behind Jan Magnussen. That's the yellow tail end you can see in front. And you know the Corvette guys, having lost the 64 car, are now going right. Okay, sleeves rolled up. You know, shoulders set square. This is not going to beat us. We are going to get this car onto the podium and elbows up. Yeah, and do you know what? You know, and Alan's been in that situation at Audi. Mm -hmm. Porsche have been in the situation where they had one car left and they've still gone out and won against stronger opposition or as strong opposition. Sometimes, when you've only got one arrow in the quiver. Again, it's all down to luck. It's not yeah. down to mental attitude. You can't no. mentally 
get your car in the right way, in the right position when the safety cars come out. 71, slow on track and losing fluids. That's AF Corsa's Miguel Molina. Can that be right? There's the well, 10 number car. Number 10's going very slowly as well. That car, the last running car. That's Renga van der Zander. Uh, the second sector wasn't very fast. Yeah, only three seconds slower than the car behind it, though, of uh, Sven Muller. The Porsche Junior driver, van der Zander, with the indicators blinking. I hope he's not turning left there. I don't <laughs> think that would be his intention. And this might be the final nail in the coffin. Yeah. And, you know, do you want good riddance? I think the Dragon Speed boys will say not because of the guys that are driving it. We heard from Elton Julian earlier, said, you know, kudos to Henrik Hedman for sticking mm. with it. But he said the car has been nothing but trouble from day one. And I don't think he was, uh, you know, trying to give any yeah. other impression than they'll be very glad to see the back of Run, yeah, running season. 81 laps down in the last place at the moment. So, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think if there's any chance it's going to get retired, it's going to happen now. And in fact, uh, there's, that's, that car is 60th officially, but the car that's 59th, the 88 car, <laughs> won't go back out. We know that. The car that's 58th, the 98 Aston Martin, won't go back out. We know that. So although they're not officially retired, nor is the 95 car, they're not going anywhere so this we have four already that will not rejoin the race and it looks as though the number 10 car might be lucky to get back to the pit lane double yellows at marshall's post 25 that is at indianapolis 71 car 24. 71 car has made it into the pits yeah report was that that car was leaking fluids and he has dropped behind Sven Muller because he has come into the pit lane but that wasn't on pace but that does put James Winslow at the wheel of the Inter Europol LMP2 car that is the last running LMP2 car back up onto page one so into 35th place and that Inter Europol car what happened to that actually I saw it had one little excursion but it was sort of in the 10 to 15 group but now suddenly it's hanging out the back of the field so it might need to a little uh, on board with second place squiz that's my michael christensen so yeah james, james collado pulled out a two second gap yeah. now so the ferrari is looking good in these cooler conditions here's the 22 car making a pit stop. We saw uh, uh, Paul DeResta was behind the wheel the last time we saw that car, and they were struggling with the door. The car's in eighth place in the class. DeResta still behind the wheel. Pile, Bamber, Tandy. Bamber and Tandy were teammates, winning the overall in 2015. Of course, Pele just passed Magnus in a couple of laps ago. He's pulled out a two and a half second leader over him. So he's uh, he's on it now. He's pushing, but sadly for him, he's uh, a good minute, at least a minute down the road uh, from Christensen and Collado. However, as you said, he's only a minute behind the Christensen Collado battle, and so are the five cars behind him. Safety car now that happens to pull out in front of the 51 car, bang, they're all yep, back together. All back and together. suddenly we've got that big GTE pro fight, nose to tail, to tail, to tail, to tail, to tail, to tail. Wouldn't and, that be nice? <laughs> well, it, it's happened it, once. Yeah. We've had two safety cars that have broken it up, but the first one jammed them all back up together. So after four hours, they were actually closer than they were at the end of lap one. So the 91 car has come to the pits. Front Makaviki will take over that car as it comes back out onto the racetrack. That's the uh, the other factory German Porsche, yeah. number 91. That may sound weird to say, but the other uh, 93 and 94 cars are, while well, entered by the German factory, are IMSA cars that race in the United States primarily. 97 Aston Martin with Johnny Adam has just passed Marco Sorensen's abandoned 95 car because it is now uh, start well it is now running again and has now completed more laps so that moves it up to uh, 15th in the gte pro class 
but two cars that are in the garage, both Ferraris, Miguel Molina at 71 AF Corsa. Uh, Louise Beckett is down at AF Corsa. Louise, the car was reported to be leaking fluids. What does Miguel know? Miguel, we know uh, we heard the car was being reported for leaking fluids. How was it from your point of view in the car? Well, we still don't know what happened. Uh, we were trying to recover the, the gap that we had, but unfortunately we had to stop now. And it's, uh, it's a shame because uh, the car was uh, we had a really good potential. And now we hope that the, our sister car is is uh, still still fighting there. So we will all cheer for them. Does it sound like you hold out much hope? We cannot do anything now. So uh, like I said. Before coming here this year, we, we did a really good step and we should be happy and we should be proud of what we did, we did uh, in the few, few months ago, so uh, for sure we will come back stronger. Thank you very much. Just to let you know.